dear Santa, are you real? If you live at the North Pole, how come I can't see your house when I look on Google Earth? Are you St. Nicholas? That would make you an incredibly old person. It must be very difficult to read all the letters from all the kids all over the world. How do you find time to do that? Do you know how many cookies and mince pies you've eaten throughout history? The sack is full of presents, but how do you put them all in? Does exponential population growth mean your sack gets bigger every year? And how do you climb down the chimneys? Ours is very small, and I could hardly fit my head inside. My street has nine houses, so even if you squeeze down in one minute, that's nearly ten minutes. The world has millions of roads. Being Santa these days must be so difficult. What if I end up staying at Grandma's house after all that? Santa, how can you travel the whole world in one night? You'd have to go so fast that you and the reindeer and the sleigh would burn up. I think you are real, but how do you do it? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> Every culture that celebrates Christmas also has its own festive ways to make the holiday special. Some of those involve dishes or treats that only appear once a year. Others give gifts that carry a particular meaning, and others decorate in a particular way, hold festivals, parades or parties to ring in the season. Let me take you on my journey on Christmas Eve night. Both countries incorporate a mix of British and North American traditions, such as Christmas symbols featuring winter iconography. However, the timing of Christmas occurring during the Southern Hemisphere's summer season has resulted in the development of some local traditions as a result of the warmer weather. New Zealand Christmas dishes include summer fruits and vegetables, a variety of meats and seafood and pavlova. The Christmas tree, the Pohutakawa, is displayed as well as the traditional Northern European tree. Now, there is a tradition that can be difficult to believe. It is a huge family tradition to eat KF seafood as a Christmas meal in Japan. The country puts on quite the spectacle for Christmas. With the standout event that is the Coretta Illumination Show in Tokyo, which utilizes more than 250,000 LED lights annually. The show takes place in a shopping mall, a 47-story building complex that provides the ideal venue for this breathtaking marriage of flickering lights and captivating music. The event is frequently collaborated with Disney, showcasing music from Beauty and the Beast, Frozen and Aladdin. Now we're off to Asia. The Philippines has the longest Christmas season in the world. Christmas displays are held from September to January. People attend morning mass from December 16th to Christmas Eve. 
It is believed that if you complete the nine masses, your wishes will be granted. San Fernando Giant Lantern Festival. Christmas on the African continent is festive, colorful, and loud. Everyone counts down to the end of the year when all their pent-up party mood is released. This is arguably the most popular holiday in all of Africa. And Christians, who are the originators of Christmas, are not the only ones to celebrate the birth of Jesus. It is not unusual to see a Muslim vendor selling Santa hats or decorative Christmas lights or people who aren't particularly religious wishing their neighbors a very Merry Christmas on top of their voices. Christmas is celebrated throughout the African continent by Christian communities both large and small on December the 25th. Except in Ethiopia and Egypt, who celebrate Christmas according to the Gregorian calendar, which means that they celebrate Christmas on January the 7th. Many Western Christmas traditions are now part of African Christmas culture, including buying trees, singing Christmas carols, and children waiting for Christmas presents from Father Christmas. Speaking about Father Christmas or Santa Claus, he is a legendary figure originating in Western Christian culture, who is said to bring gifts to the homes of well-behaved children on Christmas Eve and the early hours of Christmas Day. As African children, the image we get while growing up is that of a portly, joyous, white-bearded man, sometimes with spectacles, wearing a red coat with white fur collar and cuffs, white fur cuffed red trousers, and black leather belt and boots, and who carries a bag full of gifts for children. But would you imagine an African Santa Claus? Of course, you'll think about the same old Santa Claus, but with a dark skin complexion. But one Jules Kamga from Cameroon is changing things. He has created the African version of Father Christmas, a totally different one. Why? It's a white-bearded black man with a sack of gifts, right? Wrong. It's actually a female Santa Claus. And her name is not Santa Claus. Mama Tinga Tinga is her name. She is the queen of all the children in Africa. She doesn't have a white fur coat, but she wears a beautiful dress made from African fabrics and a headgear. She doesn't have a beard, and she also has gifts. According to Jules Kamga, the creator of Mama Tinga Tinga, any African woman can be a Mama Tinga Tinga, as long as she has a beautiful outfit, a headgear, and a calabash full of gifts for the children. So I can be a Mama Tinga Tinga, and you can be a Mama Tinga Tinga. Still waiting if there's going to be a Baba Tinga Tinga, though. Our search for Santa continues in the seat of southwest Turkey, near Myra, during the 4th century. The area is claimed to be the birthplace of a big man with a big heart named St. Nicholas, who turns out to be the ancestor of Santa Claus. He would often give away all his wealth and possessions to those in need. Nicholas was a monk who, after becoming the favorite saint in the Christian calendar, became the patron saint of children. For the next hundred years, Saint Nicholas was the first of the magical night bringers at Christmas. Throughout Europe, thousands of churches were dedicated to him. When Nicholas died, it is believed that people saw angels around him 
to guide his way to heaven. St. Nicholas Day is now celebrated on the 6th of December. But even after his death, people continued the practice of giving gifts in his name. Slowly, his popularity spread across all borders. This is how the story of Santa Claus started. However, over the centuries, Nicholas fell out of favor in some areas. He disappeared altogether, and in others, he was replaced by another figure. St. Nicholas's popularity grew no more so than in the Netherlands. Every year on a Sunday morning in mid-November, the quiet streets of Amsterdam are invaded by hundreds and thousands of people. They are all eagerly awaiting the arrival of a very special guest. St. Nicholas and his servants arrive from Spain in the harbor of the city. He was called Santa Claus. Germany, one of Europe's richest countries and top destinations in the world for travelers, and best known for its history, its old-fashioned and colorful architecture, castles, landscapes, delicious food and beer, and home of one of Germany's oldest traditional Christmas markets, the Nuremberg Christmas Market. There, you can find all types of foods and drinks, starting from gingerbread, grilled sausages, mulled wine and beer. You can also buy unique and handmade Christmas decorations and dolls of German saints. Every year, thousands flock to the city located in the heart of the old continent to experience the Christmas markets. They have been flocking here for many centuries and few can top the Berlin Market, home to the Berlin Concert Hall, which attracts about 600,000 annual visitors. In Germany today, Santa Claus can be seen with the Christ kind, a sprite-like child, usually depicted with blonde hair and angelic wings, even in the German Christ kind doll market in Nuremberg. Kris Kringle also became another name for Santa Claus in certain parts of America. As for the Christmas tree, it is a gift that Germany gave to the rest of the world, where families set up a paradise tree in their homes on December the 24th. It is a German tradition that the family hides a pickle ornament on the tree, and the first child who finds it gets a special gift. On Christmas Eve, children polish their shoes and leave them outside their door. In the morning, their shoes are filled with sweets, nuts and gifts from St. Nicholas, their version of Santa. Christian houses start showing up on their front door with Christian wreaths as traditions. The wreath has been around since ancient Greece and once symbolized the Christ's crown of thorns. In Austria, there is another town that always feels like Christmas. Salzburg. The city celebrates the holiday with an alpine elegance. Christmassy shopping lanes, markets, and glorious music.
It was also here in the region of Salzburg that the most loved carol of the Christmas season, Silent Night, was sung for the first time, accompanied only by the guitar, nearly 200 years ago. Like just about anywhere, a big part of Christmas is making cookies with Grandma. Or creating a gingerbread house. Families also love matching ugly Christmas sweaters. A tradition that originated in Canada and soon spread all over the world. More unique to Austria, is a ritual in which the dad blesses the home with incense as his daughter follows with holy water. The prayer is for a healthy and happy new year. Austrians lovingly decorate their tree, but unlike most other countries, they keep them hidden and secret from the children until December the 24th arrives. visuals of Krampus Christmas Parade. This is not Halloween. Austria has a quite frightening tradition, where men dress up as scary creatures that look like the evil accomplished demon called Krampus and walk down the streets during the Christmas parades. In Austrian tradition, St. Nicholas rewards nice little boys and girls, while Krampus is said to capture the naughtiest children and whisk them away in his sack. This has gained popularity in North America. In Spain, the tradition is a little different. On the 5th of January, a large expectant crowd gathers. Some special guests are expected. Not Father Christmas, but the three wise men, Melchior, Caspar, and Balthazar, are the ones who deliver presents to all the children. They arrive from the east in fun processions and parades through the streets to the delight of all the children. It is traditional for every child to write a letter to the wise men beforehand, telling them how they have behaved all year and requesting gifts. The Spanish celebrate the Epiphany and have their traditional Three Kings parade. In some parts of Spain, a log is painted with a face and hat and then wrapped in a blanket. On Christmas Eve, children smack the log with a stick while singing a song. They remove the blanket to find the hidden presents and candies. Italy, the country with also a rich history, grand churches, and where the Christmas spirit can be experienced. In Rome, the main squares are filled with holiday markets. In Italy, the sacred nature of the season can be seen all around the country with the holy shrines.
the Bifana, is an old witch who travels with a magic broom to each house, giving gifts to children. Like Santa Claus, she comes from the chimney, flies over the rooftops, and fills the children's stockings with candy or coal. It seems to connect the real world with the other world. But today, La Bifana has to share the limelight with the red-suited Santa. Here in Italy, and especially in the South, it is also an old tradition that the family gathers together for a magnificent and multi-course seafood dinner that everyone looks forward to. La Vigilia, also known as the Feast of Seven Fishes, which can include a nice big female eel. But each Italian region celebrates Christmas in its own way. Like anywhere, Christmas in Italy is a time of giving. In churches, the poor can enjoy a feast prepared and served by the community. It is a joyful occasion, and those giving feel as blessed as those they feed. Family, friends, and food are the centerpiece of the French Noel. In France, the Christmas spirit can dazzle the crowds. along the Chandelier, it's a festive forest of 2,000 twinkling trees, lights, and enchantment. The sophisticated Paris always rolls out the magic carpet for children. French families from all over the country rendezvous at the windows of the grand department stores, such as the Galleries Lafayette. Displays are specially designed to fascinate the little ones. If you ever get the chance to celebrate Christmas in France, you will notice that almost every Christian home has its own nativity scene. They are often made with wooden artifacts and little play figures passed down throughout the generations.
In Ukraine, the Christmas tree tradition is to decorate it with spiders and spider's webs as an ornament. The strange custom is credited to an ancient tale about a widow who was too poor to buy ornaments for her Christmas tree. The spiders in her hut heard her prayers and covered the tree with intricately spun webs that magically transformed into precious gold and silver when the sun's rays shone on them the following morning. Since then, placing tinsel spider webs on a Christmas tree is thought to bring good luck. It's also become a tradition to dress up our furry friends with Christmas attire. And in Ukraine is no exception. Even in Kiev, the capital, pets are dressed in traditional outfits during the Christmas celebrations. Every year, after distributing presents all around the globe, I like to think that Santa lands back safely in the place he calls home, the North Pole, that he puts his feet up in his cozy cabin after another busy, long journey. He must need a long rest after each Christmas to recover, but he is all ready to do it all over again the following winter. Only there was one thing. Santa's exact home address was never really known for a long time. The North Pole is vast, but in fact, some say Santa Claus Village exists in Lapland, Finland, and it is a wonderful destination to celebrate the season. According to Finnish folklore, Lapland is said to be the location of Santa's secret workshop, where toys and gifts are made and wrapped by elves. Known for their good nature, these elves have the important task of making toys all year round baking cookies, making candy, taking care of the reindeer, preparing Santa's sleigh, and assisting him with any other tasks. They are also responsible for analyzing weather patterns for the annual gift gifting trip around the world. How's it going, Winky? Everything is a okay, Santa. Good man. <laughs> Winky is in charge of our space department. Ah. Oh, uh, now here, here is the latest toy rocket. It runs on real rocket fuel. Really? Mm. I've been wondering, what is this strange little creature over here? Oh, uh, Winky made that. That's his idea of a Martian. A Martian? <laughs> Wowie wow, I'd hate to meet a creature like that on a dark night. <laughs> I wonder if there really are people on Mars. Well, who knows? Well, if there are, I hope they have someone like you up there, Santa, to bring joy and good cheer to all the Martian children. Oh, Mr. Anders. <laughs> <laughs> Located in Rovaniemi in the Arctic Circle, the Santa Claus village is known as Santa's official North Pole residence. It is one of the most popular travel destinations in Finland. And the village is open year-round for children of all ages to see Santa and his elves. Visitors can also send postcards with Santa's special postmark from the Santa Claus post office. Shop for souvenirs at the various handcraft shops or learn about Finnish Christmas traditions at the Christmas exhibition. Apparently, you can even have your photo taken with Father Christmas himself. If you ever decide to go there, who knows? Maybe you will too get a chance to meet him. I haven't met him yet, but be assured that if I do one day, I will tell you all about it.
In Iceland, people often exchange books on Christmas Eve and spend the night reading the book and eating chocolate. In Norway, the short days around the solstice brings Norwegians out to celebrate the light. It's also a tradition for the Norwegians to hide their brooms in the safest place in the house. People believed that there were witches and evil spirits on Christmas Eve, looking for brooms to ride. In Greenland, it is a tradition that men prepare Christmas meals and serve the women during Christmas. England is filled with voices singing in the season. In London, the annual festival of Winter Wonderland attracts more than two million visitors every year with its ice sculptures, giant 60-meter Ferris wheel, Christmas markets, and the largest temporary outdoor skating rink in the United Kingdom. In South America, countries also celebrate in their own way. In Guatemala, at the beginning of December the 7th, at 6 p.m., people build bonfires to burn the devil figure and kick off their Christmas season. In Caracas, Venezuela, there is a unique tradition. People head to Christmas morning mass with roller skates. They need to close the roads to cars so that everyone can get there safely. Our journey now crosses the Atlantic. Fast forward to the 19th century. Sinterklaas is replaced by Santa Claus. story of Clement Clark Moore wrote the poem The Night Before Christmas. This poem brought about the Santa Claus that's still with us today. Moore describes Santa with his reindeer and sleigh landing on the rooftops and flying off afterwards into the midnight sky. Someone told me that this is the only poem in the world that children memorize voluntarily. By 1980, every American knew about Santa Claus. 
The man who came from a far remote location where it snows all year long, the North Pole, to distribute presents to children all around the world in one night. Every winter around the same time of the year, children use the US Postal Service to communicate with Santa. They send their lists and what they want for Christmas. Ah, there you are. We have so much to do, and you stand here dawdling, talking to this visitor. Mr. Anderson, this is Mrs. Claus. Uh, we're dear. We're on television. How do you do, Mr. Anderson? Ma'am. Now, I want you to go and finish painting those hobby horses. Television? Did you say we're on television? Oh, oh dear. Oh, why didn't you tell me? Oh, my hair's a mess. Mm. <laughs> Hello there. Oh, oh. In the United States, Santa Claus is depicted as flying from home to home on Christmas Eve to deliver presents to children. He flies on his magic sleigh led by his reindeers, including the most famous reindeer of all, Rudolph, a young reindeer who was teased by the other black-nosed deer because of his abnormally large, shiny red nose. Twice as big and twice as bright. Looky, looky, I'm Rudolph. Poor Rudolph. Where most reindeer's noses are brownish and tiny, Rudolph's was red, very large, and quite shiny. Rudolph! Go on home, red nose. Your mama's calling you. Come, come, Rudolph. Tonight you hang up your stocking. Foggy Christmas Eve. Santa worried that he wouldn't be able to deliver gifts on time. The lamp wasn't burning. The glow came instead from Rudolph's red nose at the head of the bed. And then came the greatest idea in all history. So Rudolph is told of the dark and delay, the fog and the blackness and losing the way. I need you tonight to lead all my dear on the rest of our flight. Dear Mommy and Daddy, I have gone to help Santa. Don't worry. Rudolph, that's me. Hurry, Rudolph. It's very dark here. With Rudolph's red nose as a wonderful light, old Santa flew quickly the rest of the night. Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donna, Blitzer. With his glowing snout, Rudolph saved the night by leading the sleigh by the light of his red nose. 
Rudolph's message that a liability can be turned into an asset prove popular. Now we all know Santa's preferred mode of entrance, which is why empty stockings are hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there, as Clement Clark Moore wrote in his famous poem. Stockings can be filled with small treats, toys, and candy canes. Children write letters to Santa, and on Christmas Eve, they often leave milk and cookies for him, and carrots for his reindeer. By keeping a naughty list and a nice list, Santa can determine who deserves gifts on Christmas morning, as a way to ensure the children are on their best behavior. The lists are immortalized in the 1934 Christmas song, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Gift giving has been an important part of the Christmas celebration since the early 19th century. When stores began to advertise Christmas shopping, and it was only a matter of time before they began to attract children and their parents with the lure of a peek at Santa Claus. The Macy's Santa has appeared at almost every Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade since it began in 1924. And fans of all ages still line up to meet him in New York City and at stores around the country. The small ones can take pictures on his lap and tell him what they want for Christmas. in people's minds about his appearance. But who really is Santa? Apart from the kindly, jolly bearded, full size and larger than life old man. Well, he is an outgoing person. Somebody who truly enjoys the Christmas season. Timeless and not bound by time. Children of all ages find comfort in his story. People and countries have always liked to have their own traditions and representations. What Santa Claus is like very much depends on where in the world you live. And in so many cultures, children love their local version of him. But one thing is the same all around the world. Every year, children eagerly await his arrival. Santa is alive. And he is alive in each and every one of us. I wish you were here tonight. Oh, what I give to have you here, my dear. We could sing and laugh about our wonderful. So when Christmas Eve comes, May all the children leave snacks, cookies, and milk for Santa nearby the chimney with the hope that they will wake up to an empty glass and plate and presents to open the next morning. You know you're my everything, the only present I want. Oh, what I give to be with you under the mistletoe. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, I got you on my mind. Merry Christmas from a distance, I wish you were here tonight. Merry Christmas, Merry You Christmas. now know how Christmas is celebrated pretty much everywhere. It doesn't matter how you celebrate Christmas in your part of the world. Just make it meaningful to you. For me, the true magic of Christmas is the twinkling trees, the sparkling crisp white snow, 
the families gathered together in joy and peace and the opening of gifts. It's a time for family and friends to be together, a time for happiness and warmth. A closer look at all the great seasonal traditions reveals that the story of Santa Claus is truly something special. His image has endured throughout the centuries. The story of Santa Claus, one of the most iconic symbols of Christmas, will continue to be passed down for many generations. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah, I got you on my mind. Merry Christmas from a distance. I wish you were here tonight.